Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking space scene effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do now is we have to generate our content and I'm really liking Adobe Firefly at the moment and that's where I generated these two pictures from. So for the first image I searched for a space scene with moon with a storm and galaxy in the background and I'm pretty happy with those results. You can play through with some of the settings and change some of these things up if you like. The choice is yours really. Once you're happy with one of those images all you have to do is just press download and then you can save it to your computer. As for the next image, what I did is I just changed the keywords a little bit and I searched for a futuristic moon. And I did change some of the settings as well. I changed the color and tone to a cool tone and I changed the content type to art. And I also added in some studio lighting as well down here. So I was really happy with this one. It kind of reminds me of the Death Star. So I'm pretty happy with that. I just pressed download and then I was able to save it to my computer. Now for the next part of this tutorial, you will need to create an account on runwayml.com. And what Runway is, is another text to image or to video converter pretty much. And you can do a lot of stuff in here. You can actually go text to image in here as well. But I'm really liking Firefly at the moment. So that's why I stuck with that. So what we are going to be using is the image to video option over here. And once I click on that, you can see that you can um, drag your clip in here. And there are a few controls if you want to change, for example, the motion. I always tend to, you know, bump up the motion a little bit just so it gives a little bit more movement. And once you let the AI work its magic, you're left with a really, really nice clip. So here we have our clip of our Death Star planet from Adobe Firefly, and we're using it here in Runway. And once you've got that, then all you have to do is just download that and uh, save that to your computer. Now, the problem with Runway, especially using a free account, is that it's limited to four seconds, which is fine, but also the resolution is kind of a little bit restricted. But that's okay because there are AI apps out there as well, like Topaz Video AI, which can upscale your clip to whatever size you need. Now, it's not perfect and I'm not gonna show you in this process, but because I'm planning to do another video with that in the near future. So once you have your clips and you've upscaled them, let's take it to After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a new composition. So I'm just gonna be running with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about maybe eight to 10 seconds, press okay. Once you've got that, you need to import your clips. So if you just right click and go file import, you can now import your clips over there. And then I'm just gonna drag them to my timeline. Now, because I did upscale this to 4K, I need to bring them both back down to the size that fits my composition. Now you can see that there are some black borders on the edges. So what we need to do is we need to just, you know, fix up this scale and just maybe increase it a little bit and just, you know, reposition it to where we want the planet to be. And then also make sure that you scrub through your timeline to see where the planet actually uh, ends up. And if you're happy with all of that, then you can work on the next planet. So here again, the same thing. We're just gonna increase it a bit. Maybe we'll put it to something like that. And I'm just going to move it over, maybe something like that. And I'll just bring it up to about 56. And then just, you know, scrub through to see if it ends up where you want it to be. And I can just move that up a little bit. All right, cool. So now we're gonna work on our, you know, little crossfade transition, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this to the end of that clip over here, so four seconds. I'm gonna move, um, you know, the playhead over there as well. And now what I need to do is I need to move back 20 frames. Now you can do this a bunch of ways. I'm gonna be holding Command and Shift and pressing the left arrow. So that's one, that's two. So that's gonna be 20 frames. And if you're on a Windows PC or you don't remember that shortcut, you can always hold shift and you can press this, um, these buttons over here up in the preview. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some markers. So I'm gonna hold control, press eight, 
as well. That will bring up a marker there. And then I'm going to move forward in time 10 frames, add another marker, and then might as well add a marker at the end as well over there. So now I've got these three uh, markers set 10 frames apart. And now what we can do is we can add a little crossfade between them. So we're going to start on the bottom layer over here. So I'm going to press T for opacity, hit that stopwatch. All right, move 20 frames and then bring that to zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both those keyframes, go to keyframe assistant, go to easy ease, or you can just press F9. And then I'm going to go to the graph editor over here. Now you have to make sure that you are in the value graph editor over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold shift and drag this part out and hold shift and drag this part out to create a nice S bend. And we're going to repeat the same process again on the top layer. So press T for opacity. We'll hit that stopwatch, but we'll just uh, reverse the value. So that will be zero. And then we'll move to the end and then we'll bring it back up to 100. We will highlight both those keyframes. We'll go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, hit the graph editor and we'll do the same thing again. Hold shift to keep that line pretty straight and we have that nice S bend over there. So now we have a nice, you know, kind of, you know, cross dissolve, I guess, cross fade between two of those clips there. So that's looking pretty cool, but now we have to add some rotation. So to add some rotation, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new adjustment layer and we are going to search for the effect called transform. And again, we're gonna start at this point over here and we are going to set a stopwatch event for scale, move forward 10 frames. We're gonna bring that up to, let's say 200. And then we're gonna go to the end and then bring it back down to 100. Now, if you press U on your keyboard, you will bring up all of those keyframes. And again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to keyframe uh, assistant, easy ease. We're gonna go to the graph editor. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that one closer to the middle and that one closer to the middle. And then these ones, we're gonna just bring down so we have a cool little peak that goes like that. So that's looking pretty cool. So now it kind of zooms in and we're gonna add some rotation to that as well. So we're gonna hit that stopwatch for rotation. All right, it's gonna press U to bring that up. And then I'm gonna go to the end of that uh, little transition set and I'm just gonna hit one over there. And again, what we need to do is we need to go to easy ease and we're just going to do the same thing that we did before creating that little S bend curve. So that's looking pretty nice. And now we have a cool kind of, you know, flip of those two clips there. But there are a few issues over here, like all this black space over there. So to fix that up, what we need to do is we need to search for an effect called motion tile. Now we need to drag that to the top of this clip and we need to click on mirror edges. And then if you just increase the output height and output width, all right, now you should see no black areas uh, as it's uh, you know transitioning over. So that's looking pretty cool, but to make the effect even better, what we can do is we can add this uh, little button over here, which is called motion blur. And now if you go into the center of that transition, now you've got that cool effect over there that kind of sells it a little bit more. Cool, so now that we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to highlight all of those layers and then go to layer pre-compose. I'm just gonna call that VG. All right, and then what we need to do is we need to add our astronaut in here. So all I'm gonna do is just go to file import and I'm just gonna put the PNG that we downloaded earlier. If you don't have this, the link will be in the description. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to scale him down slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a scale uh, animation. So I'm gonna hit that stopwatch. I'm gonna move to the end of the composition and I'm just going to bring that back up to probably about 80% and then I'm just going to cut this 
to make sure that you know that's the end of the composition because that's the, they're the seconds that we lost so now we have a really cool kind of scale in effect and you can see that it gets larger as it gets towards the end so now what we need to do is another thing to just give the astronaut some movement is to apply the puppet pin effect to the astronaut so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to set up points using the puppet pin all right so i'll put a point there i'll put a point there and you don't really need too many points but what you want to move you know you want it to be locked onto actually something and so what I can do now is I'm starting at the first frame over here. I can just move, you know, his arm, you know, kind of slightly and then move to the end of that composition and then maybe even move it back to how it was. Maybe even move it up a bit. Now you don't want to go too crazy here because otherwise it's going to be, you know, um, pretty noticeable. So, and I'm just going to do the same for the other side as well. So, I'm just going to move this side, maybe like that. And then I'll get to that end point and I'm just going to move the arm back in. So, something like that. So, now we're going to have like two things moving. And then I'm just going to move his knees one way. And then I'll just get to the end and I'll kind of reshuffle the knees back like that and so now we have a little bit of movement to our astronaut and that's looking pretty cool but we can add a little bit more movement to our astronaut by pressing p for position holding option and then uh, hitting on that stopwatch and just put the expression wiggle 0 0.6 maybe comma 10 and now you will have a little bit of movement to that astronaut now if you want more movement you can definitely change these values around as well so now that we have that out of the way the next and final thing is our last adjustment layer so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a new adjustment layer and i'm going to search for the effect called four color gradient and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to color hunt and i'm going to choose a cool theme here so i'm just going to put these values into uh, our four color gradient effect. Cool, so now that you've done that, you can just change the blending mode to hue and you can actually change the opacity on how much you want. So maybe if we just drop it down, you know, maybe to about 70% and you can see what we have there. So now we have a uniformed color that goes over the astronaut and the background as well the next effect that we're going to add in here is glow so if we just put on glow and we make sure that glow goes uh on top of the four color gradient we're just going to change a few values over here we're going to change the threshold to let's say 90. we are going to change the radius to let's say 130 and we're going to leave the glow intensity at one so now you can you can play around with some of these settings so maybe if the glow radius is too big or the glow intensity is too big you can always drop it down as well so the final effect that we're going to add here is some noise so i'm just going to search for the effect called noise and i'm just going to bump that up to maybe like let's say maybe even 10 percent something like that and that just kind of ties everything else together so the only other thing that i did in uh, my original clip is when it starts to you know do its uh you know transition over here i did add a kind of a blur to the character but you know what i, I think it doesn't really even need it i think it probably looks you know good just like this where the character just keeps on floating and you've got that nice you know glow in the background and you have the transition between the two clips so anyways guys i think i'll leave it there for this tutorial um thanks for watching i hope you learned something and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video